Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. So this comes up every now and again. I have another version of this on the channel. So, you know, I know there's 300 hours of content, so maybe you don't bump into everything. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times I tell people, well, listen, you're not going to have to calculate yield to maturity. And then some test taker will say, Dean, you told me I didn't have to do that. But yet here I'm looking at a question that's asked me to do that. Why would you lie about me? Lie to me about that? When I say, well, I didn't lie to you about that. You know, take a deep breath. So let's look at this one. Are they really asking you to calculate yield to maturity? They are not. So we uh, bought these bonds in 2020. They're 10 percent debentures. So that is the coupon. Remember that coupon is based on par. So it's kind of like learning a foreign language, but let's just figure out real quick what that's going to be. That's 10% of a thousand. So 10% uh, times par, which is a thousand. And that means this bond pays a uh, hundred dollars in annual interest. Now remember that'll be in two semi-annual installments. Uh, let's put that there. Now let's put this here. Okay, so uh, 2030 is when they mature. F&A means February and August. So these bonds pay on February 1st and August 1st. Bonds pay semi-annually, very impotestable. And so that means of this $100 in annual interest I'm getting, I'm going to receive uh, one check for $50 and another check for $50 per bond, February 1 and August 1. Call them in 2025. Uh, priced at 85. So that 85, again, is a percentage of par. So let's figure that out. So 85% of par. And that's 85 so this bond is uh, priced at a discount. A discount. So that means since these uh, bonds have been issued, interest rates have gone up. Uh, what is the yield of maturity? Well, anytime you get these relationships, and that's really what this question is about, is the relationship between yields and prices. And so the minute you should get a question like this, you should say, I think I'm going to need the teeter-totter. I think I'm going to need the teeter-totter. The teeter-totter or seesaw, I'll link it in this uh, video. I'll pin it with a comment so you can take a look at it. So there's a bond at par. And as you recall, when we buy a bond at par, all of the yields are the same. So there's my bond at par. Here's interest rates over here. Now, I'm a big fan of the teeter-totter because the teeter-totter turns uh, judgment questions into aim and shoot point and click questions. Now, I know that interest rates have gone up. And since the bond was issued, how does Dean know that? Because the bond is trading at a discount. And that's the inverse relationship of bond prices and interest rates, right? So... And I know that because this is 850, less than par. Okay, so the fulcrum of the teeter-totter, the fulcrum of the teeter-totter is the nominal yield coupon fixed or stated rate of return. So now I'm just going to put that in there. And then remember, we have the current yield. And we have the yield to maturity, which what this question is about. And we have the yield to call. So those are the yields. And when we buy a bond at par, all of those yields are the same. So let's put that in there. Whoop. Now that's helpful, by the way, because when I get that, well, let me just fix this here. Uh, that's helpful because once I get that, my flat line, I can eliminate choice A. So by process of elimination, I say, okay, well, I got to, it's not that because that would be a bond at par. All right, then I'm going to draw on my teeter totter the line that represents a bond at a discount. Remember, the line that represents a bond at a discount looks like this. Right? So. That's helpful because I now know that the yield of maturity is somewhere greater than 10. 
So I know the current yield is going to be in here. The yield to maturity, what they're asking me on the question is this. And there's the yield to call. So what I should be able to do on the test, what I should be able to do is calculate current yield. That is something I should definitely be able to do. I should be able to calculate uh, current yield. And so remember, current yield is what an investment pays me divided by what it costs me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the $100. Let me get a different color here. And I'm going to divide by 850. You know, if you can't remember what to do on the test, you should divide. And if you can't remember what to divide, you should uh, take the first number divided by the second number. That takes care of almost all of the series uh, seven math. And when I do that, what it pays me divided by what it costs me, what I get is current yield, right? So whatever that number is, it's current yield. So, okay, so now I'm gonna take my calculator because my arithmetic is not so good. Where is my calculator? Here it is. Okay, so 100 divided by 850. That is definitely something I should be able to do. And I get 11.76 as our yield to maturity. So, or excuse me, as our current yield. So that's my current yield. Let's put that in there. Boom, boom, boom. And so now that I know that that is 11.6, the current yield, Boom, let's put that in there. That means I can now eliminate uh, choice B because I know that choice B is not correct because 10% is there. And I know that the yield of maturity has got to be something higher than 11.76. So that now by process of elimination is no longer available to me. Uh, I just did the C, and that was the current yield. Boom, leaving me with the correct answer, which is D. Now, the other right, real way I know it's D is because I know that the yield of maturity, based on the relationship here, has to be somewhere greater than 11.6. So that's the other way I know that that number is something greater than that, right? So that's how you answer this question using the teeter-totter. So the uh, test taker said, Dean, is there an easier way to do this? And, you know, they were telling him how to do the rule of thumb approximation of yield to maturity. And the answer is certainly yes. The answer is certainly yes. So let's go back to the question. The customer bought 2020 10% uh, debentures. They mature in 2030. They're February and August to F and A is when they pay interest. They're callable in 2025. Uh, the price was 85. What is the yield of maturity? So the way we proceeded was figuring out the annual interest is $100, 10%. That's the coupon, the nominal yield, fixed or stated rate of return. Uh, we said well, it was priced at 85. That's a discount. 85% of par is 850. We drew a flat line, which represents our bond at par. And here we know interest rates have gone up, causing the bond to go down because it's trading at 850. We know that when you buy a bond at par, that's the flat line on the teeter-totter or seesaw. And so we can eliminate choice A because that would be a bond at par if the nominal yield is the same as the current yield. We then said, well, gee, Dean told me I don't have to do yield to maturity, but yet I'm looking at a yield to maturity calculation. No, you're not. You're being asked about the relationship. So now I draw my line, which represents a bond at a discount. And I know that relationship, which is very testable, I know that in a bond at a discount, a current yield is higher than the nominal yield. The yield of maturity is higher than the current yield. And the yield of call is the uh, higher than the yield of maturity. I say, okay, well, I got to take a strategic uh, pause here, deep breath. I should be able to do current yield. So I'm going to take current yield, uh, annual interest divided by the market price, right? What an investment pays me divided by what it costs me. I get, when I do that, 11.76. And so now I can eliminate choice B. And I can eliminate choice C, remain uh, leaving me with the answer by process of elimination, which is 12.43. All right. Well, uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. Send any explications you have like this to me, and I'm more than happy to uh, explicate them for you. 
Bye-bye.